Hello friends, we are in the module named Environmental Conservation and Disaster Management and uh, today we are going to talk about Disaster Management Cycle. So basically here we will see the aim and objective of Disaster Management and what is Disaster Management Cycle. What are its components or rather we can say what are its phases related to disaster. So quickly moving ahead, our first topic is Aim of Disaster Management. So here at first we will understand what is the main aim of studying disaster management and what things gets included in it. Disaster management aims to reduce or avoid the potential losses from hazard. See the first thing here is to reduce potential losses from hazard. We already know what are the key differences between hazards and disasters. A hazard can be prevented. So here our main aim is to prevent this potential losses from hazards. The second is assure prompt and appropriate assistance to victims of disaster. Now if the hazard has already been a disaster then we can uh, at least provide the assistance to the victims who have suffered this disaster. We can assure prompt and provide appropriate assistance and achieve rapid and efficient recovery. So this is also a aim of disaster management to help people to recover, recover from the loss. This loss may be of the property or assets. Government may help those victims to recover. So this becomes the aim of the disaster management where uh, still if it is hazard then we can try to prevent or avoid that and if it becomes the disaster then uh, we can at least uh, provide assistance. We can guide them to withhold that disaster, what to do during that disaster and how to overcome that disaster and how to recover from that. So this was the basic about disaster management. Now. We'll talk about the disaster management cycle. What do you mean by disaster management cycle? The disaster management cycle illustrates the ongoing process by which governments, businesses and civil society plan for and reduce the impact of disaster, react during and immediately following a disaster and take steps to recover after disaster has occurred. So this is basically a cycle in which disaster management works in phases. It is basically a developed process which tries to reduce the impact of disaster and teaches the victims how to act during and immediately following a disaster. What to do before a disaster, how to prevent that and if the disaster hits us then how to recover from that and what to do during the disaster to survive that and take steps to recover after a disaster has occurred. See here the disaster may be an earthquake, cyclone, it may be a man-made disaster like a accident, fire, then a tornado, cyclone, all these things. These all are considered as disaster. Actually these all are hazards until it finds a victim. Then moving ahead, continuing with the disaster management cycle introduction. Appropriate actions at all points in the cycle lead to greater preparedness, better warnings, reduce vulnerability or the prevention of the disasters during the next iteration of the cycle. So following this disaster management cycle, it helps victims to get uh, prepared for the disaster they understand the importance, they get a better warning, it reduces the vulnerability or the prevention of the disaster. That is still it is just a hazard and not hit any victim, it just helps us to prevent that. Then moving ahead, a complete disaster management cycle includes the shaping of the public policies and plans that either modify the cause of disaster or mitigate their effect on people, property and infrastructure. So here to complete the disaster management cycle which includes numerous policies which are meant for public which modifies the causes of disaster or mitigate their effects that is to reduce their effects if it hits us, property or any other infrastructure. So we can mitigate that is reduce the effect of the disaster by following this cycle. Then moving further, now we'll talk about numerous phases of disaster management cycle how the disaster management cycle works, what are the components, what are the phases. The first stage here is prevention. Activities aimed at trying to prevent the future disasters occurring such as building dikes or a dam to control flooding. So here we are talking about the disaster which was uh, just a hazard before, which was just a hazard before it hits the victim. We can try to prevent it before it hits us. We can shift to another places if we are aware about the uh, disaster. If we are knowing that we can be a victim of a cyclone then we can just stay inside the house and protect ourselves. We can even call the fire emergencies in advance. In this way we can try to prevent the disaster. This is the first stage of the disaster management cycle. 
Then second is mitigation. Activity is aimed at trying to mitigate the impact of a disaster if prevention is not possible, such as building schools to be more earthquake resistant. See, sometimes it is not possible to take the preventive measures for any disaster such as earthquake. But we can try to make these structures earthquake resistant, which may at least save their life. We are not concerned with the structure, we are concerned with the life. So we can try to build not only the school, but any other structure we can make, uh, try to make the earthquake resistant. We cannot make any structure earthquake proof, but at least try to make it earthquake resistant. It at least gives the victims time to exit the structure. In this way, we can save the life. So this was just an example for mitigation. We can reduce the effect of the disaster if it hits the victim, if it is not possible to prevent it. Then third stage is preparedness. Activities aimed at trying to prepare communities for a disaster such as emergency drills or pre-stocking relief items in logistic hubs. This is a very important phase of disaster management cycle. Where we are spreading the awareness about the disaster, we can teach people how to act during any disaster such as earthquake or fire or any other emergency. We can carry out emergency drills which can save numerous lives. Then next is Disaster An event that caused significant damage to people, property and infrastructure. See when this hazard hits the victims, it is known as disaster. And in the next phases we will study what if the disaster hits, that is response. Activities aimed at understanding needs and responding to them including rapid assessments, provision of food and non-food items, provision of water, sanitation and hygiene services and health and shelter interventions. After a disaster, when search and rescue activities are critical, it is most often local actors who are first to respond. See, government should take measures in order to take care about the victims, like they can provide food and non-food items, then they can provide water, and even they can provide sanitation and hygiene services. And uh, if we talk about uh, immediately what government can do after the disaster, that is they can uh, carry out search and rescue activities. So this is a very important phase where uh, people should be rescued in case of earthquake or fire or anything. Then next is recovery. Activities aimed at trying to return communities to normal life such as livelihoods development or formal education. Recovery activities can start when the disaster has stabilized and the affected population has access to food and water and some form of transitional shelter. This stage is sometimes divided in two, early recovery and medium term recovery. So here if we take an example of an earthquake, many people might have lost their houses and loved ones and here the victims are taught how to recover from that loss and they are providing services to help them get their normal life back. There may be two types of recovery based on the damage, for that may be early recovery or medium term recovery. The next is reconstruction, activities aimed at rebuilding infrastructure and housing. This can often take years and many activities may also blend back into mitigation, such as retrofitting schools to make them more earthquake resistant. For example, if we talk about the disaster or earthquake, then it might have weakened numerous houses and all the infrastructure. So the first thing after the rescue activities, so the first thing after the recovery may be carrying out retrofitting, that is strengthening the structures, strengthening not only the schools, but all the structures and making them earthquake resistant. See, this may be a medium term recovery, it may take time, but this is necessary stage, this is a necessary phase. So friends, these were the phases of disaster management cycle, this is all for today and thank you for watching.